Well, glad to have you back. The economy of the United Kingdom is a highly developed social market economy. It is the sixth largest national economy in the world, measured by national gross domestic product, 10th largest by purchasing power parity, and 22nd highest by nominal GDP per capita, constituting 3.1% of nominal uh, world GDP. By PPP terms, the UK constitutes 2.3% of the world's GDP. That's part of the country's economy recovering from COVID-19 shock due to emergency support measures protecting jobs and income and a rapid vaccine rollout. It is still, uh, it is slow uh, amid persistent supply shortages and rising inflation. According to Washington-based Purchasing Institute for International Economics, the country's economy will shrink this year and in 2024, stubborn inflation and stop, stop shortage of workers will damage the prospects for growth more than more uh, most analysts expect. PIIE said again that the drop in GDP this year of 0.3% will be followed by a fall of 0.2% next year. Well, let's talk more about this. And the startup founder, World Hackers, Mr. Lubingo Onifade, joins me from the United Kingdom to talk about this. Thank you so much. It is good to see you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, almost all through the year, well, we've been talking about the stress and all that is happening to the economy in the UK. But right now, there are renewed signs of stress hitting the UK's economy. Take us through some of these notable issues. Yeah, sure. You, you, you're not wrong. Um, I think there are, among the developed nations in the world, you know, we're talking about the G7, which is you know, United States, Germany, Japan, Canada, Italy, and the UK. Uh, UK has actually been uh, forecast to have the highest um, inflation and, of course, the slowest growth uh, you know, among, among the peers, really. And it, it is partly due to, of course, I think, you know, people, we don't have to look, look far back. I think people might think uh, 2015 is that far, but it's only eight years ago when UK decided to join, you know, to, to, to leave the Brexit. And then, of course, we had, we had COVID, which was heavily hit uh, in the United Kingdom. And, of course, the, you know, COVID was actually suppressed by the fact that the government had to print a lot of money. Um, I think, you know, you could actually say, you know, about 90% of all the money in circulation right now is being printed in one way. But, you know, as it goes, everything that goes up must come down. But at the same time, there's nothing like a free lunch. Uh, and, of course, as a result of that, that has to be clawed back because the country is in great debt. There have, there have to be projects that have to be abandoned uh, heavily. And uh, someone's got to pay for it, unfortunately. And uh, so UK... Been, not being a part of a larger group when it comes to business. You know, it's kind of going it alone and forging its own lane. So in a way, it has to have uh, an obviously understandable slower growth compared to other countries, unfortunately. So this is where we are right now. And uh, so it's a, it's, a comp it's a compulsion of different factors which is leading us to where we are at the moment. Does it look like the UK cannot cope with the consequences of the exit and Brexit? Uh, just that you said, let's start on that note. Because I'm also looking at growing worries, uh, price of crude, you know what is happening, and all these could, have, of course, drag growth. Sure, you, you, you're not wrong. But I mean, the UK can cope. It will take a while. I mean... As you could see, there was Brexit and there was a re-Brexit. People are, are, you know, so some people thought, oh, do you know what? Maybe we voted, in the, you know, because we were we were lied to. And some people calling for another another, another vote. But of course, in this case, we've we've got to allow democracy to win. Um, but you know, there's a, there's quite a few facts. We and it's 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 a quite obvious thing that shadows of Brexit still hangs over us. I mean. I think everyone knew it last year when the UK had a rotation of prime ministers just within three times. And, you know, should I say over the last five years, UK must have had about, what, four, five, five, six prime ministers. So that's not exactly a great thing. So, but, you know, that a few facts, Brexit disruption to immigration and supply chains, it just does mean that the UK will be stuck with searing inflation. It will, you know, it's going to take years uh, and strategies, you know, based on Wall Street, they've actually decided it or they predicted this. And of course, as a result of that, we will have high interest rates, uh, which is going to be a problem uh, with the UK uh, corporate, corporate bond, which is known as the guilt. And of course, also, um, based on, you, on, on Brexit, you know, UK not being part of the larger trading group, 
So again, the UK is supposed to be 5.5% poorer than it would have been if he had stayed in the EU, because now you're going to have to pay some extra surcharges. And, uh, and also, there will be, uh, should I say, some counter-importance or counter-performance, counter because we do have quite a few perks that we were getting from the United, uh, from the United European Union. Now that has to be self-funded. And of course, research, part of partnership has to be funded. And then, and then again, UK has got to, got to find, it, find the money from somewhere. Uh, I think one of the key things, uh, you know, which was a questionnaire that was sent around, and uh, I think the poll decided that the UK or the Brexit clearly has not delivered what people thought, you know, based on the overall performance, that it will deliver us, uh, just based on indicator indicators. Um, so UK has actually become a less open economy, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's become a magnet for migration because the EU workers who actually came in uh, then to subsidise the economy, do doing the work, they've actually left. And of course, we've got to find the find the source uh, from elsewhere to come in and backfill. Mm. But many say inflation seems to be on track. Uh, to come down. Uh, but we've seen interest rates and uh, all of that not doing so well. Even for us in Nigeria, it's not working. Inflation in Nigeria today is about above 25%. Alarming rate, highest that we've seen in, in recent times. Uh, so how are uh, uh, regular UK citizens, how, and all of you living there, even those that are not citizens living in that country, how have you been coping with prices of food, soaring energy prices, and all of that has it been in recent times? Is it like what we face down here? Um, I mean, of course, it's 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 a lot more grave in Nigeria, which is which is a shame. Uh, but things are not exactly the, the the best in the UK for the UK standard. Anyway, inflation was stubbornly high at eleven point one percent, and which is the highest it's been in forty years. And surprisingly, it came down. To just about what 6.8 last month. I mean, it, it kind of went up. And what what the prime minister uh, his based on his promise is that inflation is going to come. It's going to half inflation before the end of the year, based on Bank of England. Surprisingly, again, he's on track. Uh, but what are the key things that made inflation come down? I think, and you're right. You know, the price of crude oil and crude oil has just been stubbornly high. And on the on the other side, gas has just been extremely low. Uh, but of course, for for ma for manufacture, transportation, and and for 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 economy to boom, you need low crude prices. So that's been high, and on the common man as well, it, it's been lingering. You know, which just means there's more mo sorry, there's less money in your pocket because the the more people are protesting, the more protests you, you know, the more you demand, and of course, people are passing on the 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 the, the, the rate hikes because inflation's been suddenly high, and of course that means. The Bank of England, they've got to increase the interest rates. I mean, since April 2022, the Bank of England has actually been hiking interest rates to so the highest it's been right now. And there's been, a, I think there's a forecast that, you know, it's just going to remain that high till, you know, we're looking at to, to the next 10 months, July 2024. So we're not even expecting a dip. But also there's a warning that they might still raise it if there's the need be. The pound is actually struggling Dollar is stubbornly high, which means, and of course, you know, if you are, I mean, UK mostly imports as well what, what, what they consume. So again, everything's just going to remain high as a result. It's, it's, a, it's a global phenomenon, unfortunately, but it's just a bit worse in some places than the others. And of course, again, on the normal people, on the, you know, the common man, like myself, uh, you know, people who are in, in employment, they've actually had to take extra days off from work. Um, and I think there was something shocking that came out today. So we, we talked about staff taking about roughly eight days uh, in the past year, which has been up from about five days. And, you know, partly blamed on COVID, partly some people just talked about the fact that they can't even afford to, to you know, to take the journey to, to work. Some people cannot even take, you know, the, the, the expenses. People are forcing the employers to make them work from home. But again, you need the people out there. You need the economy booming. The, the government is cancelling projects. You know, there's one of the HS2 high-speed train, which is the second one, which is supposed to be a fast-moving train, which, and of course, is going to make the north, you know, they call it the north-south divide, and it's just going to be able to, to, should I say, kind of make the journey from London, for example, to the, uh, to the, to, to the north Manchester. You could make it in such a very short time. But as a result, that's been cancelled. And as a result of that being cancelled, that just tells you that. Uh, you know, there will be a lot of jobs lost again. So on the common person, people are hopeful Then people, you know, there's going to be a lot of job, a lot of job lost. And then, of course, it could lead to job creation also in the north. 
But again, that just left a lot of hopes dashed. And um, so, you know, also, I think the final thing I was going to talk about is the government borrowing, which is just the difference between what the government spent and the tax income. It actually rose, surprisingly, again. So we're talking about 12 billion, So, which is just, I think, it's been the, 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 the highest since the record began in 1933. So that's just not great all around. You know, the government's looking for ways. And of course, what does that mean? You're going to have to go to the, to, to the common person again. You have to pinch them, tax them more, find ways just to be able to get money back in the government coffers. Interesting stuff. Uh, you bit me to it because I, I was to ask you about the workforce and the labor unions, uh, if they are at peace with government now. We used to have all of those protests and all of that before now. Uh, you want to take it away? Take, 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 I, I respond to that. Of course, no, they they never satisfy. They they still not. I mean, surprisingly, they are never things, satisfied. <laughs> things went went a bit quiet, you know, over the last month. But then all of a sudden, it just popped out again. You know, we're talking about the junior doctors still having a strike. You got the rain, the, the the train drivers still talking about their strike will proceed. I mean, all this is nego you're negotiating, but you know, no matter what you get in terms of, you know, the, where is the money going to come from? The, the government is going to have to print more money, and then it back it back rolls again, kind of like shooting. You know, scoring an own goal and you know inflation gets stubbornly high all over again so people are not satisfied you're never going to be satisfied uh, happening it's just stubborn i mean one thing economists say about when it comes to inflation it doesn't disappear over, it does not disappear overnight you don't expect this thing to disappear but there's uh, one of the past prime ministers john major what he said is if it doesn't hurt it's not working so now um, i think something came out again today about um uh, that's a mortgage, you know, young people who are looking to get a mortgage. Normally, how do young people cope? People just talk about, oh, you got to cancel your Netflix, uh, so it charges, and you got to cancel coffee. But it's not as simple as that. But, you know, less less young people now are, cannot even afford, or more young people cannot afford to buy the first homes, and less and less are coming forward. So, you know, they call it the bank of mom and dad. But if the bank of mom and dad cannot supply the young people, then there is a problem because the bank of mom and dad, they've got to be able to look, work longer with a retirement age being, being deferred further as well. So all around, um, people are just taking what they can. Um, I think there's, there's been lifestyle changes as well, which has been creeping into, into, into people. But overall, um, there's still been protest. But God, as you're protesting, the governments have to have to print this free money, and they're going to have to find a way to get it back from the people. Well, interesting stuff uh, there. Uh, with expected shrinking even going on in 2024, according to projections, 2023 not looking uh, good towards the end. 2024 might still have that shrink. What is your entire outlook uh, for the global space, uh, even markets, stock markets? Sure. Um, I mean, equities are literally down the drain right now. You could literally throw a dart, and you know you you will be lucky to think you will you 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 strike gold. So right now, equities are really down the drain. Dollar, you know, dollar is, is, is getting to a six-month, it's actually gone to a six-month high, and it's still, you know, it's still peaking almost. I mean, it wouldn't eclipse 2008. That was just a catastrophe. But it's like just almost about to eclipse what we had last June uh, 2022. Um, but America is kind of in line with what the United Kingdom have done. So the rates, rates has actually been paused, and I think it will be frozen for the next, you know, foreseeable few months. Uh, I think Q1 next year, we don't expect any surprises at all. It's still going to be down in the drain because, and when the rates are high, are high, governments struggle to borrow money. And what does that mean? Of course, you get mergers and acquisitions and takeovers, and of course, some companies will just have to shut the doors. So. I don't expect anything at all up to 2024. I think maybe towards the end of Q2, then we should start seeing a relief because what the, the Fed said in America and likewise the Bank of England, and of course a lot more countries, and I think about 30 leading co countries in the world are, or central banks in the world are saying uh, they're looking at 2024, maybe Q2 or second half rather, uh, end of Q2, second half, where they think, okay, we can start reducing rates. And of course, once you start reducing rates, that boosts the economy. 2% um, has been the target for inflation uh, generally because it's just a general agreed acceptable target. So if inflation is able to get to 2%, they will do the job. So, I mean, you get this uh, Federal Open Market Committee, which happens a lot in America, and of course, the Bank of England. And we, we, we're privy to see the notes of, of their meetings 
but what they've actually been saying, the government, governor, uh, the government, the governor of Bank of England has been saying, Jay Powell has been saying it as well. We will stick to the job until it's done, and they're not going to relate, uh, renege or relate until inflation gets to two percent, and that's what the deal is. So we don't expect anything at all until maybe the later end of 2024 or beginning of 2025 before we get another good cycle all over again. But for now, I think cash is actually king because if you think you're going to hold your money, and even if the bank is going to, if the bank is not going to give you in the UK, for example, if you're not going to get more than 5.25 percent, you are actually losing. So you might as well just keep it, except you're able to get more than the interest rates, which has been promise. Otherwise, inflation is, I mean, if you cannot get more than 6.8%, sorry, because interest rates are 5.25%, but inflation is at 6.8%, almost 7 So you need to be able to get more than 7% in the UK. And as a case in Nigeria, if you're not getting more than 25% in interest for whatever you're doing, you are losing. So sometimes it's just best. I mean, they say the best thing you can do sometimes is nothing. Just stay put. Interesting conversation as usual. Mr. Luke Bingo Onifade is a startup founder. We're on Hackers, always bringing us up to speed with happenings in the UK. Thank you for your brilliant contributions. We really appreciate this. Thank you, sir.